in every scenario. And what did you tell that doctor? The uh, when we had you, you many had times, yeah. When I we went into the surgery, I think it was his second open heart surgery. Cole had had a cardiac arrest and mm -hmm. was out for five minutes. They brought him back to life. And sick kids was just. We are so blessed to oh. be in in Canada, in Ontario, and have a hospital like sick kids so close. And so we really felt like we were in good care, but, and we had the best of the best. This heart surgeon um, was amazing, but when we sat down, I was able to say to him um, that uh, we're praying for you. And he says, well, we'll do everything we can. And I said, I, I know. And I said, we'll go. He said, I, I believe it'll go well. I said, I, I believe so too. And I said, we, we're praying for you and my whole congregation and a lot of people are, are praying for you. Yeah, that, that God would guide you today. And, and I could say that not because I'm trying to, th that, you know, oh man, I'm not really sure how this doctor is. I'm praying that God's going to have him do a good job, but he's the best and you take the best and then you're also able to add the but God and that God will also be able to guide him. And that God factor reality was expressed in ways you could probably write a book. Mm. Uh, you say people visited at the right time. Oh, it's unbelievable. I, I'm sure that's one of the concerns when you're so focused and so overwhelmed, you don't want a parade of people, mm. people who would love to help and encourage, mm. but somehow that was just paced well. Yeah. Even to a, one time Cole had a blood infection and we had just within literally minutes of hearing from the doctors that he's got this serious blood infection that he's got and uh, it means we're gonna have to do blood tests every hour to monitor it. It can be very serious, it, cost, it could cost him his life. Within that time, we got word that another church, this prayer ladies group, were praying and a, ner and a woman who's a lab tech was in that prayer group that morning, came to work at Sick Kids that morning and was holding the vial of blood of baby the coals. same baby coal. Wow. She put two and two together and, and had to go through some proper steps to make sure she wasn't crossing boundaries of privacy and all that stuff, but just came to in a lab coat in our door and we'd seen a lot of lab coats, but within minutes said to us, just want you to know that when I do the tests on coal, I'm, I'm praying for coal and I'm actually holding his blood when I pray for those tests. Wow. And so when you have, and that's just one of them. I mean, there was over and over again, things where people would say, well, that's a real coincidence, but yeah. what for us, even beyond, it was just those little signs that God says, yes, you're in the middle of a trial, but you're not out of my sight. I'm still, I'm still in control. Who gets the credit for noting one of my favorite choruses? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. <laughs> he works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way yeah. for Roadways me. in the wilderness. Yeah. He leads me rivers in the desert. There's a quote from scripture. And, and my family, when I grew up, my, that song was given to my parents when my brother Brent was sick with cancer and dying. And uh, we sang that at church at Bethel in Hamilton over and over again. I can remember Brooks McElhaney, our worship pastor, leading it. And when Cole was very sick and, and I saw my parents lead that congregation and lead our family and be a, be a support to Cole and to us as kids, as to Brent and us as kids. And we transferred that in some of those things with Cole. And one of those things directly transferred was that song as an encouragement to us. Jamie, I didn't know about mm -hmm. this. You lost a brother? No, he lived, he, oh. but he was on death row. Uh, he, he was in a coma and at the end of his life. And um, my mom, the big breakthrough was when my mom was praying at the altar of our church and he had a big transformation. You know, since the earthquake mm -hmm. in Haiti, this verse has been stirring in my heart. And as I, I hear you speaking, I think, okay, God prepared you mm -hmm. through some uh, tough things sure. to trust him for other things that mm -hmm. might come. Mm -hmm. And isn't it wonderful that when God comes through in those unexpected trials, you, you kind of do like, hey, I. I can do that with God. Mm -hmm. and, and then the next thing comes and, and you're a little less threatened and a little less scared, mm -hmm. a little more faith uh, in that foundation. Mm -hmm. and, and you go from strength to strength mm -hmm. and from glory to glory, mm -hmm. as the scripture says. This, this is Jeremiah 12, verse five. You probably know where I'm going here, Jamie. If you stumble in a safe country, mm -hmm. how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? Mm -hmm. In other words, if you're going to fall apart and, and think God has left you and lose your faith in, in that first trial, that, yeah. that first little thing that you didn't expect, how are you going to make it with all that could come? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to look to Him, mm -hmm. whatever comes. 
and we will be strengthened and we'll find he is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Am I and sounding, is this no, a platitude absolutely. or and is this reality? Romans was, has been a great book and a couple of things in that way. Romans 5 and 3 talks about why we have suffering in difficult times. And, we, and through these times we've asked questions and, and one of the things I've came out of this with the understanding and belief that God, and we really said, you know, God wants to answer our questions and our why questions. Why, you know, is, what's our child's life going to be like? Is our child going to live? And I believe God wants to answer those. But the reason why we have suffering, we often ask that big, and he's a God of purpose. So mm -hmm. he wants to answer the why question because he wants to reveal his plan. And a lot of time it's like that verse in Romans where it, suffering produces uh, perseverance, character, and hope. And you, you have hope in all suffering cases and situations, even if it does get worse when you've seen him faithful in the times in the past that have been difficult. Now we haven't done a play by play on the whole medical journey. Mm -hmm. it, it's a much bigger battle than we have reflected. I'm gonna just capsulize it. Three open heart surgeries, mm -hmm. 14 medical procedures, including a colostomy, mm -hmm. a colostomy reversal, mm -hmm. a diaphragm placation, pla placation mm -hmm. and over 50 blood transfusions and over 130 x-rays. Mm -hmm in such a little life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all in his first three years, those were. Wow. Let's yeah. look at the three-year-old who's come through all of that. I, that I guess was coming third. through. Third, yes. third, that was the last open heart surgery there. You can see the little tape down the chest and all his connections. And uh, those are him just recovering um, after the surgery. That's mom trying to get him. He, he lacked motivation. You see Pam's actually pregnant with our, our youngest ginger there. Little and girl on the way. Yeah, she was girl. blowing bubbles, and that was the key to get him to start moving again in his rehab, and he would try to pop them with his hand. Okay, now speaking. Oh, here we and go. And here's Davis more. gets to join us. So there we are as our, our family. Dad's taking the picture. <laughs> Pam's with the ginger in her tummy, and, uh, and Cole and Davis all together, sick kids. Now, you would think that all of this would limit Cole, but uh, we're about to see the athlete yeah. mm -hmm. in pictures first. Yeah. Uh, how is his health today? Good, he's doing great. He's done everything from running cross country at yes. school without telling us. He just all of a sudden came home and said, yeah, I rode cross country today. Um, and uh, very active. He um, gives his brother and sister a run for their money and they're, they're equal to the challenge. So he is in very much, uh, very hard to distinguish for him. Just, he's a little seven year old boy. Regular guy. Our, yeah, we have our yearly checkups at Sick Kids, and those also, you know, you're anxious about it. and. There's times where we still need to trust God and Absolutely. wait for results. And but yeah, overall his heart Great. seems to be well Gosh. adjusted to his body. Okay, here's the athlete coming at you now. Watch these. There he is. That's about six years old. That was taken in the summer, and uh, that's him the being that. Davis likes to take shots on him. <laughs> And he's played indoor soccer for a number of years. That's him with his medal. He's pretty proud of that. I think and we have I'm also. sure his proud parents are to thank for the goal, first goal in well, soccer yeah, that I'm, we are about to replay. I'm proud that you. I had the camera actually on for it. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cherry picker. He gets that from his dad. There he is. Play by play, shoots the scores. Woohoo! First one you could tell because he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> new experience, a wonderful new experience. Okay, now we do have a family shot. I'm gonna, just gonna show you the picture well, first. Here they are. And, oh, this whole family. And here they are in person. <laughs> and uh, dad, introduce us. This is Davis, our oldest. And this is Cole. And this is our little girl, Jinja. Jinja is named after? It's a, a town in Uganda. My parents were missionaries in Uganda, and Jinja has a special part in my heart, so we named yeah. her Jinja. And ages, I need to know how old they are. Davis yeah. is nine, seven, and four. Jinja's yeah. four. Now, Cole doesn't have a mic on, but I know he had a very important message for mom and dad yes. before we started this interview. Do you remember what you said, Cole? What'd you say, bud? He, he told us in the room, he said, Mom, I want this to be more about God than about me, please. Hmm. It so. is a God story. It yeah, sure it is. is. It's a wonderful story. Mm -hmm. A beautiful family. And I'm sure your church family has grown as they've accompanied you through this battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been a great support in prayer and 
it's really, um, they're a compassionate, giving, and caring church anyway, but it has really gone to make us even more so. It's reaching out into other families who have been challenged and facing challenges. And so uh, they've been ministered to us, but that's really who they are. They, they minister to a lot of families and people in, with care. And I think through this, God's really prepared us to help others. Well, what a wonderful name you have. This is the Shepherd family. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you've shepherded some hearts today with what you've shared. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming today. You've just made our family day extra special. Well, thank you for having us. Thank I hope you. you've been encouraged too. You know, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world.